So I'm Christy Bryant with the Best of Austin Living Team at Keller Williams Realty, and I am very excited and pleased to be doing another Tip Talk with Amanda Rollings from mm -hmm. Trend Design Build. Amanda, can you share a little bit about yourself with us? Oh gosh, I've um, been decorating and remodeling homes, especially in the Austin area, for 17 years now. So yeah, just do complete home renovations, additions, decorate top to bottom. There's no size uh, budget or project that is a, you know, factor. We do everything. So oh, I love that. Thing. From yeah. small to big. That's right. That's Excellent. Right. Well, we are going to do a little recap of what we have um, presented and talked about uh, since September. So we did talk about bathrooms and we talked about kitchens. Today, we're going to go through flooring and paint, kind of tie it all back together. And then we're going to talk about mm -hmm. holiday decorations. So right. there are many different types of holidays and religions. And today we're going to focus on Christmas decorations. But this really applies to any type of holiday theme that you are wanting to play with and it could be Easter, it could be something else along the year as well. And I love what Amanda did. Um, even though this year I feel like I'm not gonna decorate as much, it inspires me to maybe get in the spirit and do more within the house because that's where we're gonna be celebrating instead of being yeah, out. It's, it's time now and people have the time. So it's kind of fun. And I'm gonna show you ways to repurpose what you have too. So, it, you know, that way you don't have to go out into the stores. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. Judy, we cannot hear you. Um, right now it is not allowing um, for uh, our participants to talk, but if y'all have questions, so as we're going through, if you have any questions, please put them into the chat. And um, same as for folks on Facebook Live, any questions that you have, put it into the chat, and I will do my best to be checking as Amanda and I are um, talking and chatting about uh, flooring and paint and holiday decorations today, and we will get your questions answered. And if we um, don't get to it in the moment, we will come back around and we will have a Q&A at the end of the session. Anything that you wanna say, Amanda, before we get started? Well, and as we go through this, uh, it is a recap. So I'll just touch on little points and everything, but if there are specific questions um, about what we're talking about, yeah, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, and, you know, so for some of us, I guess it'll be new too, some new information, so that's good too. Um, I know, Christy, we started off with some befores and afters. We did. Can you see the screen, Amanda? I can. I can. Perfect. Just making sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, good. We're on the same page. So here we go. This is a great before and after. What, what did yes. you do here? Oh, gosh. This uh, master bathroom. Actually, this was part of a whole house renovation. I think we have a couple more pictures of this home. Um, it's in North Austin. And as you can see, it's a 1990s home. Um, and the homeowner just wanted a fresh new look. And so we started with everything that's important right now. Um, marble floors are very big. And the color is very bright. Things are going to whites and blacks. Anytime you can bring white and black into your home, it's always a good thing. Um, but we did everything. We did all new marble shower. And the only thing in that, that bathroom that's original is the bathtub. Um, she just didn't want to change it. It was in good shape, so we didn't change it. Uh, custom bandy there and mirror and everything. So, but very bright, very new. Looking. So I think it's pretty amazing going from the, the dark flooring to mm -hmm and the a um, little bit darker color on the yeah. walls to the lighter that it looks like a completely different bathroom in fact the tub looks different to me yeah and even that gold paint i mean it just you know we're, everything is so different now and so easy to do just because it's just all brighter and it goes to a lot of things and makes your home look bigger i mean look how big the new white bathroom looks compared to that old the older yeah. bathroom so yeah, it's yeah beautiful. let's go to the next one the same thing, uh, brown, brown kitchen. We know this kitchen well, don't we, Christy? <laughs> yes, we do. It's on the other side of that wall. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this, I remember when, this is Christy's kitchen. We'll just share with you. And uh, the before, the brown cabinets. And I remember the first thing she said when she saw the cabinets painted, she said, why would anybody, you know, be on the fence about painting their cabinets? Because look how pretty they look. Um, they just turned out to be so much brighter and cheery and everything. And then again, we went with all new countertops. And notice the flooring. She had the, the tan tile before, it had a travertine look. It was actually a porcelain. And we went with, that is that wood flooring is actually tile. So it's just so easy to keep clean and 
you know, nothing can ruin it. The dogs, whatever, kids. So, but it looks like wood, but it's actually tile. I and just see how that comes in different yeah. price points too. I don't want anybody to be afraid of that tile because you can find great tile that's inexpensive and it looks great all the way up to some more expensive tile. And uh, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but you can, you can do that relatively inexpensively. So let's go to the next one. That, that one also looks amazingly different. Yeah, and I, you know, notice in the, the before picture where they had the microwave over the stove, everyone seems, I mean, there's, that was a thing back then is to have that microwave over the stove. And just by taking that out, and we just redid a, um, a cabinet in the kitchen to, to, to retrofit that, that microwave into. And then we lifted those cabinets up and took them all the way to the ceiling and lit them up on the top so it looks even more dramatic, prettier. Um, but yeah, that's the same kitchen, just done a different way. Oh, also that kitchen in particular, there was a column that was on the end of that, that front, the closest corner to you on that island, there was a column there. So we took that out and put in a structural beam that ran the length of the kitchen there so that we could eliminate that column, really open it up. Made a dramatic difference. Of course, the flooring took that out, went with a white floor, um, flooring styles that are in right now, anything that looks natural, a marble, a stone, natural stones. This, in this case, this is supposed to emulate, a, um, it's actually a, a porcelain that's made to look like marble. Um, so that's really big right now. Carpet has always been the number one uh, flooring cover, but uh, flooring, but yeah, stones are, are, are a strong contender. In addition to the standards of the woods, um, luxury vinyl is taking on a um, popularity um, and there's a lot of advantages to that. It has a little give in the floor, it's warmer, it's it's durable, and it looks like wood. So, yep. Let's see. I think we have the, the color. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, we've always been with the grays in the past and now things are moving to more whites. Um, and white is not grandma's white anymore. It, there are different shades of white and it's important to get the right white for your room to go with your colors on the flooring and the trim colors and everything. But these are the top 50 colors right now with Sherman Williams. And of course the other major companies have them too, like Benjamin Moore and, and uh, PP, PPG and all those. So. And then I'll get into some of the pops of color. Again, here's the flooring. Um, hardwood, laminates, vinyl, porcelains, stones, um, and concrete flooring too is still popular. So if you can go, if you're thinking about changing your wood tones in your, on your floors, I would really consider going with more of the lighter woods. Uh, we've always seen the medium tones and the dark woods in the past, but now things are moving to more of the blondes and um, some of the bamboos, things like that. Here's a good example of gray walls and a warm medium tone wood. Anything rustic on the floor looks good. Um, we used to use different size uh, panels, yeah, um, boards, you know, five inch, three inch and alternate. Now they seem to be going to more of a wide um, size, rustic and a lot of irregular, irreg irregularity, um, lights and darks where it almost looks like a calico, you know, patchwork floor. And then here again, this is the same house, uh, those warm tones in the floor. So it looks really pretty. Yes, it does. Because with the, with the light woods, uh, the light walls really nicely. So, and notice the black fixtures and black doors. Any, anytime you can use black in your house, so it's a good thing. Well, and I think it's really, <laughs> a beautiful contrast between the darker floor and then the light on the walls. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is wanting to go lighter, then to have that contrast in there, it's gorgeous. Right. And like I said, the light, light flooring is becoming more popular. And a great thing about it too, is it doesn't show dirt. You know, the darker floors seem to show a lot of the bits and dog hair and that kind of thing. Um, this kitchen, see, see again, the light flooring, the light uh, wood tones, white walls, and then a pop of color in the cabinets. 
So we're, we're starting to, we still see the, the white cabinets and some, even some light gray cabinets, but we're starting to see more of the, the blues, the greens, and even the purples, the plum colors, or anything jewel tone is, is very popular right now, except for reds, just uh, blues and greens. So Amanda, uh, this floor here uh, could even be like a luxury vinyl, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, especially since Absolutely. it's a kitchen area where it's wet. Right, right. And you know, I've seen a lot of stained concrete too or even just unfinished car concrete, just put a sealer on it. It looks great. So very easy to live with. If you haven't tried that, that's it's wonderful. This is classic uh, mixed metals. They put the dark black window on there, the light cabinets. Um, you can see the gold toned uh, tones used in the, in the faucets and the hardware and the, the lights. This is very popular right now, These, this kind of look. And the light flooring again. And this is there's a, a pop of color. Love yeah, the there's pop a pop of color. color. Yeah. yeah, the dark blues. Um, I like it. And I mean, I mean, even just using it in the island or something and just making your cabinets light in the background is a really good look. And if you want to save money on cabinets, the open shelves is still the way to go. Um, you know, I've seen people even just put dishes up there, stack dishes up, and it's real good use of space. And there's Christy's house again, her living room with the, that tile flooring. We did the marble uh, around the fireplace, which really made that look so pretty and finished in there. Looks great, Christy. Yeah. Well, and I've had so many people ask about the wear of it. For me, mm -hmm. I, we've always had hardwoods. I was a little nervous about going to the hardwood looking tile, but we love it. It is so easy yeah. to maintain. And mm -hmm. we have a dog and uh, you can't tell we have a dog. I mean, it, it, it just, holds up so well. Right. I should know your paint color, but what is your paint color? Um, uh, I think it's the worldly gray. Yeah, that's really pretty. It's more of the grayish. I think you've heard that, you've probably heard that term before where we're getting away from the gray and going more to the beiges. And now, like I said, we're going more to the whites. So, yep. So pretty. Uh, I love that backsplash. And in backsplashes, I mean, that's a subway tile with an irregular front to it. Um, any kind of mosaic, subway's always a classic if you're in doubt what to put back there, but um, yeah, run it all the way up to the ceiling. You can see behind that range hood, it looks, looks really sharp. Again, black and whites, uh, black, you know, black vanities, the black windows, the black doors, black and white on the floor. This is a vintage look, uh, mosaic on the floor, and then they, they, in the perimeter, they used a marble. And they even ran the marble up the back of the mirror and floated the mirror on top. It just looks really, really good and up to date. I this love that. Like, I know. The encaustic tile with the freestanding tub on it. I've put in so many freestanding tubs lately. It, they're very, very popular. We're bringing out, even if you have this, the classic five, 60 inch space, we can get a freestanding tub in there if you like this look. Uh, garden tubs, we can put them on the, the corner. If you have a garden tub that you'd like to get rid of, we can do that. And I love this, uh, the backdrop of this tub. That looks like marble, but it's actually porcelain. It's just a porcelain. They come in big sheets now where you can put them up on the wall and it really fills the space and it just looks great. You take it into the shower. Again, a black and white print on the floor. Um, Anything hexagon is very popular and they, they ran it along the tile, um, along the wall behind the vanity and into the shower. It looks like wallpaper. Just a very good look there. Again, uh, hexagon on the floor, black floor. That's very big. Um, I love the pop of color on the door. Looks awesome. Just takes it up a notch. Very inexpensive to do. So is this pro probably a light green, a mint color? Yeah, it looks kind of almost like a, a bluish green to me, kind of a uh, egg, you know, egg, egg blue color. And then also anything with the wood tones on that last one, the, uh, the wicker baskets and the wood tones, like the little shelving and everything, that's very up to date now, just very trendy. Love this bathroom. It's just classic and timeless and. Uh, you can put anything with it as far as color schemes. Just looks so good. Uh, marble on the floor and black vanity. 
So what I've really noticed is that, and even for homes that are on the market right now, Amanda, that um, the walls are still there. I would say over 75% of the walls that I see are still some version of gray. Mm -hmm. That is still what I'm seeing out there. Um, but then there is more color coming in, but it's more with the cabinets and it's more with the accents right. within the house. Absolutely. And you know, and another thing to do, people make the mistake of, of making their uh, ceilings white. Um, we're, we're doing them all in the same color. So your ceilings and your walls should be the same color, typically. Nice. Mm -hmm. I love this bathroom. That pink right there, that's, that is the up and coming color. It's not for little girls' rooms anymore. I mean, they're using it everywhere. Um, it's that vintage pink. And the, see that green there? It's like a vintage green, 1950s color. But those are those are trending largely right now, using them in a lot of powder bathrooms, uh, master bathrooms, putting that blush color in master bedrooms. It's very it's very dreamy. It goes with a lot of things too. Look, it goes with a you know you can complement a lot of colors with it, like navies and things like that. So this is a good example of where a garden tub was. Just put a freestanding tub in that corner and updated it. Put the molding behind it, little chandelier, um, marble on the floor. Very nice look. Timeless uh, style. This is a good Love example. The concrete. I know the concrete more floor. More concrete, yes. Yep. And um, yeah, you can't go wrong with concrete. It's pretty inexpensive, and you just cannot mess that up. So, looks great. And then they have the pop of color there on that one wall. That's right. Nice time. Behind, it, yeah. It also behind. separates the with the one large room. It separates that space from the other. That's right. And they brought in the wood element. Anytime you can bring a wood element in, that's always great too. With that ladder. Okay. okay. Before we move on to Christmas, uh -huh. let's just take a moment. I'm going to stop the share and let's see if our attendees um, have any. If anybody has any questions. You'll put it into the Q&A or into the chat. That would be fabulous. And let me check on um, Facebook Live. So we do have a question, Amanda, um, mm -hmm. for pets. What type of flooring do you recommend if somebody has pets? Well, it depends on what you want and what look you want. But of course, concrete is the most durable. Any kind of tile is the most durable. Um, don't be afraid of wood floors, especially laminates or the luxury vinyl, because they have a coating on them now that um, it, it just resists the little scratches and everything. But if you have, you know, if you worry about pet stains, things like that, I would go with something like the tile or the, uh, the uh, concrete. So. And then the, another question about carpet. Yeah. Are people still using carpet? People are still using carpet. And I just shopped with a client and learned a lot about car all the new carpet now. There are fibers out there that you don't use soap. You just use some hot water and it releases all the pet stains. So carpet is not the way it used to be so much anymore. There's new technology to it and there are new fibers and the price point is still really good. Um, you can find good durable carpets that'll last you years and years. And that if you do have a spill, even red wine or pet stains or whatever, just hot water. We're not using the soap anymore. Remember the stories about how if you use soap, it just kind of released and it would attract more dirt. And that's why they're now going to just hot water. So, yeah. Well, uh, most of my clients with two-story homes, I still recommend having carpet on the second floor because right. it makes it, the noise, um, the echo downstairs is much less with that. That's right. But do you find that there are other flooring options as well? Or is it really like carpet's the best choice for a second, second story? Well, I love, I love wood flooring and I, I'm kind of a stickler for, I love wood flooring, but you're right. If you, if noise is a factor and that brings me to, I have another client that, um, that's, that's a problem. They have a game room upstairs, which is right over their living room. And so when they have, when they're entertaining, the noise of the kids running around is really a problem. So, um, you can put some insulation, you can put some insulation in the, in the, in the flooring. There's also padding that goes down before your carpet, which is a noise barrier. So there's lots of ways to deaden that sound if that's a problem. So, yeah. 
And here is, um, what are the pros cons of vinyl versus laminate and how do they do with pets? Uh, pros and cons with vinyl and laminate. Laminate, they're pretty similar, right? I mean, yeah, it's they kind are. of. Yeah. Personally, um, vinyl is good. They've come a long way with that, te with that technology and the look and the durability. But I think, um, I think the, uh, the laminate is, is probably a better choice between the two when it comes to pets. Um, but like I said, the laminates are now coated uh, with, a, with a special coating that resists all those little scratches. And they're a lot more durable now. I mean, it used to be you'd put uh, you know, a laminate flooring down. It may last about five to 10 years. There are many products out there now that they offer a lifetime for residential homes. If it's in a residential area, they'll, they'll warranty it for a lifetime. So, yeah. And that's, that's pretty amazing. Sorry about the feedback. I'm not sure what that is. Um, so Mary had asked that question. And I have to say, Mary, going into homes these days, often I actually have to get down on the ground to even see if it is a laminate, a hardwood, or a tile. Some of them look so similar. If I don't have on the bright shoes to clink, clink, clink on them, right. I literally get down and I'm like. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They've come a long way with it. And like I said, different price points. Because, you know, we all asking, have different purposes. She's asking, what is a luxury vinyl? Hang on, everybody. <laughs> Amanda just froze. What is a luxury vinyl? Yes, what is a luxury vinyl? You're freezing there. I, I'm, I'm good. I think it was you. Uh, yeah, Lux luxury vinyl is basically, um, it has several layers to it. It's just a different construction is what it is. And it usually has a thicker um, top layer of wood, but the under, under layers are either built up to where it gives more of a softer footing and uh, it's, it's a lot more durable. And, and like we said, it looks more like wood. So, yeah. Okay, if y'all don't have any more questions, let me just check here. Um, then we will go on to holiday decorations. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised nobody has questions about paint. No questions about paint? Eggshells versus satins versus, yeah. Since you brought that up, though, Christy, let me just say one thing about paint. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you are thinking about painting your kitchen cabinets, just know that there are new products now uh, that are made just for kitchen cabinets. The durability will be there. It won't chip. Um, they won't they just, it goes on like butter. It just, it is a paint that is made for kitchen cabinets to where they almost look like they've come from the factory that way. So. Here is a question. Um, let's see, let me pull it up. You can see Judy's asking what color is on your walls? Yes. Worldly gray. It was a Sherman Williams color. Yep. Mm -hmm. Worldly gray. Yep. And I do think that, so Amanda did a different take on it and that she um, did some different variations of the same. I believe you added a different, like a stronger tint. Is that correct, Amanda? Right. And what's behind you is a good example because we built in her office. That is actually, that cabinet behind her is actually her office. If you open that up, it's just loads of storage and she has all kinds of things hidden in there. But what I, a little trick I, I like to do is when you have a cabinet like that where you want it to blend into the wall, but, um, it, but you want it to complement. So you don't want it to obviously be the same color as the wall. You can go to Sherwin-Williams or Benjamin Moore or whatever and intensify. And especially if you put it in a different uh, type of paint, in this case, it's a semi-gloss, um, it'll, it'll look different, but it blends really pretty. So if you're having trouble putting colors together, um, say you have a dining room that's next to a living room and you want to marry two different colors and have different looks, but you want them to look pretty. You can't always go by that color strip that you get from Sherwin Williams or Benjamin Moore and just, it, it, the two colors that sit side by side don't necessarily go together. So what you can do is just intensify the concentration of the paint color and it'll give it a different look, but it'll look great. Um, it's a good way to intensify shadowing too in a room. Um, say you have a living room and behind the couch, you want to have a darker, intensified color besides 
what else is in the same room in the same room. So you could just paint that one color behind your couch in the uh, more intense color. And it just makes it look really elegant and pretty and all blends nicely together. So. And then um, can you share who you use to do concrete pours? I've had several different stories if you have pets. Um, I mean like who my contractor is to do wood concrete? So or there, are asking? there companies, possibly companies that do the yeah. concrete floors? Right. Judy, um, concrete floors that are inside your home have to be finished in a different way than they do anything else like pouring patios outside. It's a different technique and it's a different composition as far as the type of concrete that they use. And it's a different process as far as how they finish it. Um, and then they come back and seal it. So there are companies that just finish interior concrete floors. There are also, um, we haven't brought up stamped concrete either, but there are stamped concrete companies that can finish your patios and things like that outside to make it look like stone without having to have stone work done. And that's real nice too, like if you're, um, your front porch area or a sidewalk that leads up from your driveway, you can use some stamped con concrete. So, yeah, I was in the upscale home. Boy, that feedback. I was in the upscale home in Wimberley uh, last week. It looked like the biggest pieces of tile in the home. Yeah. It was stained concrete, concrete, and they had just perfectly done right. the lines in the. It was gorgeous. It was a yeah. beautiful floor. It was. It was difficult. It really looked like individual pieces of tile, but it was concrete. Right. Right. Yeah, they put a stain down and they put, uh, they have a stamp. And usually the stamp is about 24 by 48 or something. And they'll put that stamp down, smash it, just like you stamp into Play-Doh or something, you know. And they'll throw a powder down that's a stain. And then they rinse it away and then they seal it. And it looks natural. It's really pretty. We don't see it used as much as we used to, but um, it's still out there. And it's much more economical than trying to put stone down or something. Before we move on to holiday decorations, I just have one point that I would like to make about resale. Um, not really about paint. I think that we need to enjoy the homes that we live in. And if there's a wild color you want to go with, like it can always be painted over. Flooring, I have to say that when I walk into a house that has more than three options of flooring within the first couple of rooms, it's very overwhelming to the eye, overwhelming to the nervous system. And the fewer floor choices that you can go with the more just, calming. You're, it is it's you're very right. you're right i'm glad you brought that up because i'm asked all the time is what makes your house look bigger is it paint or is it flooring well number one is it's paint uh lighter paint on the walls will always open up a room yep. and you're right i'm asked all the time how many how many different textures can i have on the floor can i have wood flooring <laughs> can i have tile can i have carpeting everything and you're right if you can go with one that's the best um, you don't want to butt up two of the same tiles or same flooring together that are uh, you know from room to room for instance your if you have tile in your bathroom you probably don't want to have tile in the adjacent room you want to either have a wood or a carpet or something like that um, so that's that there's an exception to the rule of not having the same thing throughout the house so just a little point. It, it makes a difference when you walk in. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. We okay. Any other questions before we move on? I think we're good. Okay. Shall we uh, talk Go about on the holidays? holidays? Yes. Yeah. And you know, when Christy asked me to do something about holidays or just talk about it, first of all, it's my favorite time of the year. I mean, it's my favorite holiday. Um, and my kids always think that I overdo it, but I love it. Um, and it's hard to eliminate or hard to limit the talk on what we can talk about. So I just want you to know that I'm going to go through a couple of basics and it's probably things we always know, but maybe you'll pick up on something a little different and fun, you know? So let's go to the first thing. Uh, when I started decorating my own trees, I, I always wanted them to look like they were professionally done and try to figure out what they do in magazines. And a couple of tips. First of all, if you have a pre-lit tree, add some more lights to it. Um, put them in different textures and different colors and different sizes, but it gives more of that depth 
And when the tree is lit, it just looks a lot better than just a, a plain tree. Um, secondly, if you have, we all have a lot of old stuff, like old garland that probably that you're keeping or old trees and they need a new light, life to them. Um, consider, go to the next one, Christy, if you would. Uh, go, consider blocking your tree. It's really messy, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and it's amazing how you can transform stuff that looked kind of compressed and old looking, it makes it look new again. Uh, last year, I pulled out all my old stuff. I was, we were about to move and I thought, you know, I'll, it's probably time for a change. I pulled out the old trees, I pulled out all the old garland, all the old wreaths, and I laid down plastic in the garage and I just went to town spraying this stuff everywhere. And it looked like a winter wonderland in the house. It just, and then when you um, put all your ornaments on, everything kind of shines and is, uh, you know, looks a lot prettier. The second thing I always tell people to do is to pull out everything in your home that reminds you of Christmas. Uh, ornaments, it could be um, sleds. I actually have one of those, that's how old I am. Um, <laughs> uh, could be skates, it could be bar items, anything that you think would, would make you feel like you can use this and repurpose throughout your house to make it feel like, like Christmas. Uh, take out old collections and things like that. The next thing you want to do is try to come up with a color scheme that you're going to use throughout your house. And that's key. You want to carry whatever you're doing in multiple places throughout your house. So for your tree, you know, make it marry with your color scheme of your house, which is common sense. But, um, you know, like choose, choose one color and make that your predominant color. Um, so after you've done that, then you might want to choose like the larger items. It could be picture frames. It could be collections of nutcrackers or whatever it is. Lay those throughout your house. Also set them inside your tree and you can secure them in your tree with like wire or pipe cleaners or whatever. And then you just start decorating your home and your tree as you would naturally. Um, this is a good, cute example of a themed tree. Um, Santa Claus theme, obviously. Just take a simple little hat, put it on the top, green and red throughout the house. Lots of fun. Uh, looks really cute. And then um, in this tree, you could, if you look closely, you can see some of the bigger items. They have some picture frames in there and, you know, fire trucks and stuff like that. Looks really cute. But anyway, start uh, layering up with your larger ornaments. Um, this obviously is a bird theme going on. And, um, and then you want to take those little balls, the, the inexpensive balls, the colored balls, and nestle them deep inside your tree. And you can put them in clusters. You don't have to just hang them, you know, one at one at a time, but put groups of clustered balls deep inside your tree and then put your prettier ornaments on the outside. It looks really nice. Um, this is just a good example. You know, we always put the tree in the living room or someplace like that, but it's fun to have multiple trees throughout the house and put them in unexpected places. This is an entry of a home. You put a couple of pillows here and you just put a tree in the entryway. And it looks just nice and festive. Put a wreath in the, the window there. This is another good example. Of when you pull those things out that make you feel like Christmas, just put them in little touches of where you don't expect it. Like they put some ice skates under the tree. Um, you know, like I said, the sleds or something, you might lean those up in the, in the patio or in your entryway and hang a wreath on it. Just a nice I little love touch. I love all the greenery oh, and the pine cones. Yeah. You know, I had a revelation the other day. We bought um, a real tree for our house. We haven't had one in years. And uh, we're, we're in an apartment right now because we're building a house, but we put a real tree in here. And I thought, they're so inexpensive. You could take a short tree, like a four foot tree, use all the clippings and have fresh greenery throughout your house. And it would be, you know, $39 at Home Depot. So, and use that to make all your garland. It'll last well into the Christmas if you, you do it now. So, um, garland, same thing as your trees. What I like to do is I, I usually take about two or three different types of garland and I lay my lights down and I tie them together or you can use the branches of the garland and kind of twist them and secure everything. And then you put it in place. 
and either nail it or tack it or something up to where you can start to decorate it in place. You can add picks to it. If you want something natural like this, you can add some natural picks, uh, pine cones. If you want to add some baubles and ornaments and everything, you can do this. Uh, but if you glue the, the ornaments or even hang them while the garland is in place, you'll find it's a, it's a lot easier and it ends up looking a lot, lot better. Um, but the important thing is to try to repeat what you've done in your tree throughout your house in different areas of your home. So garland down the, down the banister always looks so nice. And then and this is kind of extreme, but I love it. Uh, garland on a mirror or even wreaths on a mirror, it kind of gives you that double wow factor, especially at night when everything's lit up, it looks really pretty. Um, all the baubles and beads just draped there. Looks really nice. I used a good use of candles there too on that fireplace. So um, I love to put wreaths in a series, and this is a good example of that, particularly in, um, and, and here they used a prominent color. And this is another little trick where you can take that color that you're using in your color scheme and make it more of a prominent color. I don't know if you can hear my dog in the background, but I'm sorry, he's coughing. Um, <laughs> he has pneumonia right now. Um, but anyway, use your color in your wreaths like this and putting them in a series in windows is a great thing to do too. I think the next one Christy shows that. Um, just very festive, way to bring Christmas throughout your house, uh, in the dining room or in the living room. I've even taken, if you have a blank wall space, just take a couple of wreaths and put them on the wall. Uh, that looks nice too. They don't have to match. Do something that's different. But make fun, have a lot of fun with it. Um, like I said before, if you put something on a mirror, it just really intensifies the look and elevates it a little bit. Here's the flock on the front door. I am so sorry. <laughs> um, Between the feedback yeah. on my side. Yeah, we're, 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 we're perfect. It's all okay, perfect. good, good. Um, I just wanted to also bring up just some other little things that I like to do. Any kind of jars, could be mason jars, could be whatever. Fill it full of candy and put a bunch of them, like on the counter uh, in your kitchen or put them on buffets or whatever. Um, it's very festive, kind of gets everybody in the spirit. And if you don't have a bar cart, you need to go get a bar cart. I have found that I actually have this exact bar, bar cart. There's a mirrored top to it and a mirrored bottom. Um, there, you can get them for about $100. They're not expensive. And there's oodles of ways to use them. This is kind of like a, a Christmas day display, you know, with hot cocoa and candy canes. But if you're having a cocktail party or even just you're at home, set it up for a cocktail bar. Um, they're just, all kinds of uses for them. I love them. And you can put them in all the different rooms. Uh, another thing, good thing to do is make different stations in your house. You could have a coffee bar station or a hot cocoa station, um, pie station, just something festive, unexpected. It just, like I said, it just pulls it through the house. And I, um, I mentioned this earlier, Amanda, but this year being so different because we're in a pandemic and many of us not going to visit family or having family come visit us. Like this inspires me to do something special for my family, which I would normally only do if we had people coming over. But wouldn't it be fun to yeah. walk downstairs on Christmas morning and like see the little cart? My kids love hot chocolate. I've, I've done right. hot chocolate stations before. Why don't I do it for them? Like, yeah, they would love that. It's so, it's so easy. And when you find yourself really starting to think about ways that you haven't decorated before, it, uh, it, it's, it's fun, it's exciting. And like you said, it really sp spreads the spirit. People love it. Yeah, my, my husband, just back to that, we used, this is another bar cart, so pretty. And these are literally, you can go to overstock.com or Wayfair or even Amazon, they have them and they'll be here in two days, so. I guess I ought to start selling bar carts. <laughs> you really like your bar carts. I like the bar cart. Uh, fresh flowers and, and make it monochromatic. I think you get the best impact with just a monochromatic look, either white hydrangeas, 
put it in a simple glass jar or a, a vase. It just looks really pretty. Um, put a candle underneath it, something that's, you know, scented like Christmas. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's simple to do. Um, I actually did this. Uh, had a guest room and I put the garland on the headboard and just took some bedding that was kind of Christmassy and it was very festive and my relatives that came to stay, they thought that was just awesome. You know, this, in this picture, there's a little tray and they put the little reindeer on it and everything. But these are other ways that you can do it. I mean, spice up the little, the master bedroom, make it fun, you know, for your master bedroom and do something interesting in there and um, get, put everybody in the spirit of Christmas. So it's nice. And then lastly, I just wanted to touch on tablescapes. Um, I'm big into repurposing things that you have. So like I said in the beginning, just go around your house and just open up your, your cabinets and look, look for things that look like Christmas to you. And in this case, just mix, mix and match and um, make clusters and, and just add candles to it and put it down the, the center of your table. You know, take that primary color that you're working with and put a, a table runner underneath it. And it starts to all blend together and pull together and make it look like it's professionally done. So. That was it. It was. It was. So, oh. golly, that feedback is terrible. Hmm. We don't hear it on this end. This end. You can't? Oh, I can hear it. Oh. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> so, um, before we go to Q&A, I just want to share again, I've shared it before, if anybody is interested in it, um, the cost value report, which shows, um, so this is actually specifically for Austin. There's one that's nationwide, state, or actually I think it's nation and then city specific, but these are just the general costs of, um, they've taken a whole bunch of information, put it together and some general costs. So it could be less, it could be more, um, you know, depending upon the project that you're working on, but it gives you an idea of what some of the general pricing is. And we had talked about this in the previous um, segments as well. So just to touch on that. And what I will say is that when you're remodeling a house, I think that it's really important to do it to something that you really like, unless you're planning to put in 10 different types of flooring. Um, however, I, I think that it's really important. So pretty much across the board, if you're doing something that's fairly up to date with today's standards, it is going to improve the value of your home. For those of us living in Austin, Texas, just by living and breathing in your house, you're getting equity built every day. It's pretty astonishing actually how much our homes, uh, the equity has built, especially during the pandemic. Since we have so many people moving here, interest rates are low and with such a low inventory, it's driving the prices up, um, which, you know, positive, negative, there are both sides of the coin, but really when you're putting uh, money, when you're doing the investment into your house, you're not planning to sell, you're not remodeling because you're planning to sell, but because you're wanting to enjoy the space that you're living in, you are investing also in your future, not just you and enjoying your space. Um, but when you're updating your home, it really is putting money towards that investment. I, for most of us, our biggest investment is our home. And so I encourage you to think through it. And um, you know, you're wanting to do something on the floor, but think through it, talk to somebody like Amanda, talk to Amanda, and um, wh what are all the different options? Um, and make the best choice that you can with the budget that you have. You're right, Christy. I think everything that you put into your home, you're, you're gonna get out you know, from it. Uh, um, I, I don't know where I read this, but I read that uh, I think it's dollar for dollar in your bathrooms and then threefold in your kitchen. So, and we all know kitchens and master bathrooms sell homes. So- Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. An updated kitchen. Right. Oh my gosh. That's what, right. and that's what people are. Oh, and another just a, a point, just, yeah. just something is that people say that they want, okay, Amanda might be the exception. People do say that they're happy to take on a project when they buy a new house. <laughs> but most people, 99% of the people who say that actually want to move into a move in ready house. Oh, so okay. If you are thinking of selling and you think, well, you know, the next person can deal with that. Um, yeah. Most of the people who walk in the house really, truly, even if they say that they're okay with doing a project, they actually want to move in ready house. Right. Right. And there are a lot of, a lot of contractors out there 
myself included, that we can do it quickly. And I, I hate to sell myself short, but I like the expensive look for less. I also I I like to I like to find a way to make it look like you spend a lot of money, so you get that high resale factor, but you don't have to spend a lot of money. There's ways to do it to where it looks expensive and you don't have to spend that that big ticket. So absolutely. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I appreciate it. And actually coming back full circle, I don't see that we have any questions at the moment. Coming back full circle about the cabinet discussion that we had earlier about the type of paint. We had had a house previously that had white cabinets, but oh my gosh, we spent, I don't, we, we were not the ones who painted them white, um, whatever paint they used. I was touching up those cabinets all the time. Yeah. Yeah. What you put on our cabinets here, it is like car shellac. Like it, it, uh, we've, I, sometimes I see our little stool, like, going across slam the into it <laughs> and nothing happens nothing yeah. happens no good. dent no scratch it's pretty amazing good good to know thank you for saying so, that Great. oh absolutely I'm, i yeah. i i love those cabinets and and that you also didn't encourage us to change our cabinets like we could have gotten new cabinets we didn't need new cabinets right i didn't want to pay for new cabinets because yeah. i was paying for new floor so you know as you know it the house that you just sold for me i didn't paint my cabinets and i didn't paint them because i had a lot of other things going I needed something wood in there, so I just left them. So, yep. yeah, you don't have to paint your cabinets if you don't want to. So many choices. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have another question? Let me look on our our Facebook Live. Any last things that you want to mention, Amanda? Gosh, I think we've covered it. Um, we did. Just hope everybody has a happy holiday. And, uh, yes. Wish for a, a positive new year. So. Let's hope that this time next year, yes, <laughs> that we're doing this in person, <laughs> and um, it's a you know similar but different discussion. Well, it's kind of fun doing it on Zoom though. Like it, it's it, this it is, is something fun. we wouldn't have done otherwise, right? Yeah. So it's it's kind of fun yeah. doing it on Zoom. Right. Um, so so thank you to Amanda. Let me just yeah. um, share our contact information. It is on that um, last point uh, PowerPoint slide here. So yeah, if you, you are, Christy. oh, absolutely. Yeah. So we will get with y'all about scheduling for 2021 if there are things that we did not talk about. So we'll we'll continue some of the similar discussions about bathrooms, kitchens, uh, flooring, paint. But if there are other things that you would like to um, hear Amanda's opinion about, um, you know, maybe there's something very specific. I have to say that there have been a lot of discussions lately with my clients with windows and doors, the really expensive windows and doors, like I have somebody buying a $10,000 door um, mm -hmm. they're pretty amazing. These big, amazing, beautiful doors. So if there are things that you're curious about, um, we can certainly um, put that into the lineup for 2021. So let us know about that. And then here is Amanda's information, 512-781-2000. Uh, and for mm -hmm. me, it's 512-994-9206. And Amanda, what other ways can folks get in touch with you? Well, email. Uh, it's Amanda at trend-austin.com, but yeah, just give me a call. There's no obligation with me. I love to brainstorm with people and, and offer ideas and that kind of thing and give, you know, estimates and talk about what you want to do. And then of course, uh, on the resale side, if you think about selling your home and bring Christy in and, and we're, we're forming a team, you know, as far as what you can do with your home. So happy to help. Thank you, Thank everybody. You. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Until next time, I hope everybody has a lovely holiday. Stay safe. And um, hopefully we'll be out of this situation soon. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Bye.